Hello, I'm Dr. Carl Stonecipher, and I'm a clinical associate professor of ophthalmology at the University of North Carolina, talking to you today about IPL, or intense pulse light therapy, combined with low-level light therapy for the treatment of dry eye disease. Here are my disclosures. Primarily, Espansione, Inovamed, and Marco Technologies are the primary ones for this talk today. Now, dry eye disease has been around for a long time. There's a lot of different functions of the healthy tear film, and we're not trying to cover those today. Primarily, we're trying to cover these technologies that are coming to the marketplace. We know that we use topography as a diagnostic tool, uh, more and more whether that's refractive uh, surgery or refractive cataract surgery. I think those are important in terms of getting better outcomes and making patients happier, whether that be with LASIK or new bifocal intraocular lenses. Now, there's a lot of tried and true treatments that we've done, and I don't want to denigrate any of those, and these are really adjunctive therapies to those. In fact, most of the studies that you're going to see today, we had tried all these other therapies in some way, shape, or form prior to them going on to these previous uh, or these aforementioned treatments. Now I'm gonna use two terms uh, because outside the United States we have one term and inside the United States we have another. Eye light is what we'll find in Europe or in Canada. In the United States we call that EPIC or EPIC treatment. Both of these are a combination of intense pulse light therapy as well as low level light therapy. And we're gonna dive deeper into that. But intense light therapy is a polychromatic light uh, that adds thermal pulses, but I think it also adds some contraction of the glands as well as heating of the glands externally. But we're gonna look at a study a little bit later that may contradict those findings, as a matter of fact, as we've seen in the literature. What I worry about with IPL is two items. One, if we don't use adequate eye protection, then what can happen in the real world is you can get a stromal burn if you're not careful. The other issue is IPL or intense pulse light therapy is not colorblind. So darker pigmented individuals like African Americans or Indians uh, can be problematic in terms of issues with intense pulse light therapy. Now low level light therapy is photobiomodulation. This has been around for quite some time and primarily we are now using these devices in clinical trials, and the first clinical trial was looking at mybography, topography, tomography. We looked at the OSDI scores, and subjectively, we looked at tear breakup time, as well as lysamine green stain primarily. The OSDI has been around forever. It's real simple to look at it as mild, moderate, or severe. So I think for the most part, we're using that as our subjective evaluation of the patient. Objectively, we're looking at topography, we're looking at other things other than just the clinician's observances. So we can look at surface regularity indexes for other factors as well. Tear breakup time is one of my favorite. Uh, primarily, we're looking at meibomian gland disease and the treatment of meibomian gland disease. So evaporative dry eye is easily looked at with the tear breakup time. Staining, I always say pick one. In this particular case, we primarily focused on lysamine green. Most of the studies focused on lysamine green but fluorescein staining was also looked at. Now, finally, we want to look at the meibomian gland itself, and we segregated in that to zero normal, or four is severe. In zero, you're actually getting this Wesson oil type of secretion with a four or the severe. You really can't get anything to express out of the glands itself at all. So what happens when we squeeze? And I think that's very important to look at that in the big picture. My bony gland disease, when we look at it, we really grade that from zero to four. And a zero is what we call normal. And those secretions, when we express, look kind of like Wesson oil. Uh, they're kind of hard to find in this day and age, too, in terms of that normal population. In terms of a grade four, that's when we squeeze those glands. We really can't even get anything to express out of the gland. So what happens when we squeeze? Now, this is a video that kind of looks at what a grade zero is, what a grade one is, what a grade two is, and what a grade three and four are. So the grade zero, what we're seeing here is expression of the glands, and it's kind of hard to see uh, from a video standpoint of you're getting a shiny 
kind of, like I said, Wesson oil or sunflower oil type of secretion uh, with expression. And, and in my clinic, uh, it's pretty hard to find this because I, I deal with a lot of dry eye disease. When we get to a grade one, that's more of a turbid oil. This is a 35-year-old patient. Uh, she's expressing mild to moderate symptoms of dry eye disease. This is looking at uh, the side view as we're expressing these patients. I'm using a Baye expressor. Uh, there's a lot of different varieties. This is just what I prefer. I typically go in three to four spots along the eyelid margin. Uh, this is uh, uncomfortable, so I'll warn the patient that this is gonna be a little bit uncomfortable as we're squeezing because uh, the more inspissated that these glands are, the harder it is to actually express that uh, mybum from its actual gland. So this is real time. I'm doing it at the slit lamp and primarily we'll do just lower lids because the upper lids really hurt. Now you can do the upper lids and that's an option. Grade two, we're looking, this is getting more to be turbid, more toothpastey uh, in its structure. This is in an African-American that's 32 years old. Uh, primarily, and we get to this grade three, this is a 34 year old male. Again, as you express, it's more like toothpaste coming out of a tube. Uh, and this last patient that we're gonna see is a grade four. She's 26 years old. She was on Accutane and we just really can't express anything from those glands. Now this was a typical type of patient that we put into this study. This was the original study and we showed that the enhancement rate was somewhere around 16%. So that meant that 84% of the patients got one treatment and that was it. Now we just followed these patients up for a year, but we showed that we roughly cut their OSDIs in half. We improved their expression of the meibomian glands uh, by twofold. And last but not least, we increased or doubled their tear breakup time. So they were in more of the normal range, whereas they were hovering around uh, four, a little less than four at the beginning. This is what the original mask looked like. So this was the paper. We originally looked at one center, which was my center. We expanded that to four additional centers and we published this in clinical ophthalmology and showed the efficacy of IPL and LLLT in recalcitrant dry eye. Now, the next question that came up, well, what if we just use the low-level light therapy or the photobiomodulation? Outside the United States, we call that the EPIC mask or the Equinox. Uh, inside the United States, we call it the EPIC mask. It's a different mask. Uh, the earlier iterations were a little bit claustrophobic, so patients asked if we could have an open-ended uh, kind of mask so that they could breathe through their mouth and nose without that being covered up. So the engineers came up with this process and primarily we're treating both eyes, upper and lower lids with this device. So this was developed by NASA. It's low level light therapy. It's a non-thermal, non-traumatic uh, kind of intervention. Primarily what we're doing is heating those uh, cells endogenously by increasing the ATP production in the mitochondria. Now, you gotta have proof with all of this. And so Professor Polt, uh, which is an optometrist in uh, Europe, and primarily he has this excellent study which compared LLLT alone and the thermal effects versus IPL. And we see in this thermography that the LLLT is more intense and longer lasting than the IPL and can last for uh, several minutes afterwards. We wanted to show in recalcitrant dry eye what would happen with LLLT alone. So in this study uh, that we just submitted for publication to the Journal of Clinical Medicine was we took a patient who had failed IPL alone, who had failed uh, ILUX, who had failed Lipoflow, many other different types of treatments. And I don't want to denigrate those technology. I'm just saying this was that recalcitrant dry eye and we showed that if we treated them on a Monday express, waited 48 hours, treated them on a Wednesday express, waited another 48 hours and treated them on a Friday in express, we got dramatic improvements in these patients that had failed 
multiple different levels of treatment prior to that. We showed that their OSDI scores significantly improved. We showed that their MGD grading significantly improved and their tear breakup time significantly improved. So when we look at this IPL versus this LLLT or the combination of the two, we know that IPL is primarily treating the lower lids. Now, there are several other investigators like Laura Perriman uh, who are actually treating the upper lids, but you definitely have to have a uh, eye protective mechanism uh, to prevent a stromal ablation with IPL. And the other thing that concerns me with IPL alone is using that on a darkly pigmented individual and getting some issues associated with that. We can treat a wide variety of diseases with these technologies with LLLT alone or the combination. Uh, primarily, the latest treatment that we're excited about is recalcitrant chalasia. And we uh, published this series about six months to seven months ago and showed that 92% of patients responded to one or two treatments within 24 to 48 hours and really had resolution of their disease process without surgical intervention. And that would be, say for example, a person with a sty who had been placed on an antibiotic orally as well as an antibiotic and a steroid topically and unresponsive and referred to my clinic. With one to two applications, 92% of these patients responded to that treatment and only 8% went on to an incision and drainage or an incision and surtage. Here's a young lady. This is typical in terms of uh, uh, younger patient populations where they get multiple horteola uh, on both eyes. Uh, we did the before and after. Uh, I have now treated her younger brother for the same issue. Here's an adult patient who presented uh, with a extremely large horteolum that was unresponsive to previous intervention. And we placed her on the mask one time, one treatment and she improved uh, to as you see in the blow. So for me, happy patients mean a happy life for me. These are some of the happiest patients I've had. The intervention is pretty easy. It's almost spa-like in the way in which we deliver the treatment. Uh, the IPL is really simple. It's a no gel IPL. So with that, I'm gonna thank you for your attention and I'm gonna thank you for your time.